I, I really do. I'm, I'm really serious about what, what I just said. It is, it is, it is, uh, it is not a good sign when that when you do that in your life because it is a very obvious sign that we are out of balance. And God wants you to enjoy life. Can you say amen? amen. And God wants you to enjoy that the Dodgers may win the World Series. Amen. But but I didn't say they would. I said they might. <laughs> I mean, the angels aren't there, so they better do something. Somebody told me, they asked me if I knew what L.A. Stu stood for. And I said, no. And they said, lost again. So I don't, I hope that. I'm just telling you what they said. I didn't say that. As a matter of fact, I started to say, well, I hope they break that curse over them in the name of Jesus and, and win. But there's a time and a place for everything. And you see, when, when, when people do that, then they wonder why God doesn't move on their behalf. And they wonder why God doesn't answer uh, uh, our prayer. And so it, 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 it's because... We're, we're completely out of balance. You don't want to do that. You never. And I'm glad that you're here. Turn to, turn to your name and say, the important people are here. Amen. And I almost want to pray, Lord, for those that stayed home and watched the Dodgers. Oh, hopefully they'll lose this one so they can learn the lesson. But I'm not going to do that. I, I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Never mind. I'm a nice guy. I'm excited about tonight because I have one, we have a, a tremendous uh, speaker that, that uh, has received a word from the Lord and has been, has been really, really waiting and waiting uh, to get an opportunity to, to, uh, to speak or share with us what God has, what he believes God has spoken to us. And, and so I, I'm excited too. And, and so I'm going to ask you to stand up. If you would, please stand up and help welcome Help welcome one of our own, uh, Pastor Scott, who's going to deliver uh, today's message. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me get set here. All right. I can see. You know what's really, first of all, what's really weighing heavy on my heart is that God wants you to know that it doesn't matter what you've done. He loves you. He loves you. With not the love of the world, but the love that he can only give. He wants you to know that. He wants you to know that you're loved. How many of you know that? You got to know that. You got to know that you're loved. You really do. Tonight what I want to talk about is declaring. And if we can just go to Isaiah 45, I promise um, I'm going to follow on the path of uh, pastor's footsteps and tell you that I promise you promise you tonight that I I won't be long <laughs> amen listen look what it says in Isaiah 45 we're just going to look at a couple verses here it says for this is what the Lord says who says the Lord says and then it goes on to describe a little bit about what he's done he who created the heavens, he is God. Turn to your neighbor and say, my God created the heavens. Amen. Look what it goes on to say. He who fashioned and made the earth, he founded it. Turn to your other neighbor and tell that neighbor, my God fashioned and made the earth. Amen. Look what it says. He did not create it to be empty, but formed it to be inhabited. And I want to share something with you about when I was yet still single. 
And there was a time where I could care less whether I got married or not. It wasn't even a thought in my mind. But then I see, after over a period of time, I start to see people get married. And I start to see how after they got married, they, they were even happier than before they were married. And I started going to the Lord and I started telling him, hey, you know, so-and-so got married, you know. Where's, where's my wife? And I don't know if, if, if a lot of you know this or not, but when I first, shortly I should say, after I first started coming to Destiny, <clears throat> I'd come to church and I'd sit and I would not let anybody, either to the left or the right of me, sit next to me. And they'd tell me, why? Are you expecting somebody? And I told him, no. I says, um, whether it was to the left or the right, I'd tell him, this, I'm saving this chair for my wife. Oh, you got to hear me. You got to hear me. I told, I would tell them, this chair is, I'm saving this chair for my wife. Was she here? No. Did I know anything about my wife? No. All I knew is that I desired to be married. And I don't know about you, but my word, the Bible tells me that if I delight myself in him, and see, that's what I was doing. And that's what I continue to do. I was delighting myself in the Lord. There was a time where it was just me and God. Trust me, people put people in my life. They'd point and say, oh, you got to date her. She's, she's such a beautiful woman. You know, look at her love for the Lord. Or No offense, whatever garbage they would say. You know, and they meant good. They, they meant good. They, they wanted me to to get married, but, you know, it, it just, it just wasn't meant to be, you know, how many of you know that, that God will give you peace in regarding his will for your life, so I, so I decreed, and I would declare to them that, you know, this, this chair is saved for my wife, you can't sit here, and, um, you know, some people would say, okay, and other people, you know, would look at you like you were nuts. But um, that's what I, I did it anyway, and for the longest time. And, um, you know, lo and behold, uh, you know, I'm not only married today. And, again, people look at you when you tell them this, you know, they, they have a dumbfounded look on your face. How many of you know that there's a difference between being married and being happily married? There are people that are married and they're miserable. Now think about that into our relationship with Christ. We're to be married to him. Now are you really, are you happily married to him? Or are you just married to him? Because there's a difference. There's a difference in being happily married and just being married. You can be married to the Lord and be miserable. And how many of you know God doesn't want that? He does not want us to live miserable. Look what it says there. He says, he did not create it to be empty, but formed it to be inhabited. Let me tell you something, people. Let me tell you something, church. God didn't create you to give you a life of emptiness. God didn't create you just so you could live a life of lack. Just have the same old life. No, God created, and even more so, he saved you and I that we may have life and have that life more abundantly. John 10.10 10 tells us that. The enemy, all he wants to do is come, steal, kill, and destroy. But no, God has come to give us life and life more abundantly. Can you say amen? Shortly after um, we got married, we were living, my wife and I and our three kids, because I just didn't get married and have a wife, my wife came with three kids. I'm a blessed man. I said, I am a blessed man. I went from being Nino to being Papa, to being Father. I was her Nino. 
Um, I was their godfather. I still am their godfather. I am the one who God has orchestrated and put in their lives to train them up in the way that they should go, that when they get old, they will not depart. You know what I'm doing right now? I'm declaring. I am declaring. I'm speaking forth. Amen. So I went from not only being a husband now, but to being a father of three kids. Blessed. So you know what? Declaring the seed for my wife not only gave me planting that seed, speaking it forth, not only gave me a wife, but gave me three kids to go with it. And my father-in-law, he looked at me and he says, what are your intentions with my, with my daughter? And I told her, I'm going to marry her. I love her. And his comment was, yeah, but don't you know she's, she's got three kids? God don't care. God don't care. You don't care. I'm trying to emphasize this. You know, he doesn't care what you were like. He doesn't care what you're like today. He doesn't care what you're like tomorrow. He loves you regardless. He loves you regardless. And his desire for you is to be blessed. It's not to be empty. It's not to be lacking anything. His desire is that your every need be met according to his riches in glory. In Christ Jesus. Let's look, let's go back to that Isaiah 40, 45, 18, please. And you know that word abundantly while we're on the subject of, of uh, abundantly, to give us life more abundantly. Abundantly means super abundance. It means excessive. To be overflowing, to have an overflowing uh, surplus. To be over and above more than enough and above the ordinary. Again, I went from being just an ordinary person that was in love with God to now being a husband and a father of three. It goes on to say, I am the Lord and there is no other. Church, God wants you to get in your heart that there is no other God. There is no other God. He wants us to get to the place where there is None other than him. He's the one that wants our hearts. He wants to serve him and serve him only. Amen? What else does it say there? And there is no other. I know there's more. Because I haven't got to my main part yet. Hallelujah. Here it is. And there is no other. He says, I have not spoken in secret from somewhere in the land of darkness. And you know what? God doesn't want us to be in secret either. There's a time to get into our prayer, clo our prayer closet and pray and decree and declare things. But he wants us to do it in open as well. He wants us to do it here when we're at church. He wants us to decree and declare. Let's go on. And you know what? From somewhere, I have not spoken in secret from somewhere in the land of darkness. And God just spoke to me there in that, in that portion of scripture there. And he doesn't just want us to just meditate and focus on the bad things we're going through. Just quit confessing those things. Quit confessing them. And speak the word of God over them. And if you, if you don't know what to speak, um, then I... Suggest you get into his word and find out what, it, what the word says. Every answer you will ever need is in the Bible. I don't care what it is, circumstance, situation, whatever it is that you need more input on, you need more wisdom, God says ask. If you don't have, ask, and he'll give it to you freely. I like what it says here. This, this is kind of like where I got excited. It's, it says, I have not said to Jacob's descendants, seek me in vain. And God doesn't want us to seek him in vain. God does what do you come to church for? What do I come to church for? I have to ask myself that. What do I come to church for? What does any child go to school for? Anybody? To learn. Why to learn? Why? To learn. 
Why? Yeah, and in our case, so that we can decree and declare boldly, confidently, knowing that when we decree, speak to the mountain, it's got to bow, just like Cheyenne said, just like it was said earlier. We have to have knowledge. Look what it says. I, the Lord, speak the truth. I declare what is right. The Lord declares what is right. Church, like I said earlier, we have to get to the place where Jesus is the Lord over every area of our lives. He has to take and be first in our lives. You know, I found it interesting that some of the meanings of declare are this, to make known or state clearly, to officially announce, to proclaim, and to manifest. And then I found it also interesting that the, the opposite of declare. So when you're not up here and you're not declaring what we're declaring, either here at church or in your everyday walk with Christ, if you're not declaring his promises, then one of those meanings, the opposite meaning is to deny. It means to forget. And here's where a lot of people are. It means to ignore, to abandon, disown, refuse, reject, and renounce. How sad. How sad that we as children of God aren't decreeing and declaring his promises. You know, my only thought is the reason why we don't do that is because we're not knowledgeable of his word. You know, we're coming to church Wednesday after Wednesday, Sunday after Sunday, and we're not taking what we've heard and actually applying it to our lives. You know, it was said earlier that there has to be action. There's got to be action. You, you, just decreeing and declaring doesn't cut it. There's got to be action. There's got to be a, a way that we're walking before God. How bad do we really want to see the hand of God move, church? I have to ask myself that every day. How bad do I want to see him move in my life? There's got to be something on our, on our behalf that's being done. We have to walk. You know, it says that he speaks what is right. He declares what's right. He declares what, what is right to be in right standing with God. How much more effective is what we're decreeing and declaring going to be if we're walking in right standing with God? Amen? Look at this. Gather together and come. Gather together and come. Assemble. It says you fugitives from the nations. Another translation says you survivors of many nations. You know what? We're survivors of the world. We need to be walking in such a way that shows that we're survivors of the world. We may be in this world, but we're not of it. It's given us instruction there. This is the way I, I, I interpreted this. It's given us inst instructions there to come together, gather together and come and assemble you fugitives from the nations. Ignorant are those who carry about idols of wood, who pray to gods that cannot save. Ignorant are those, it says, who carry about idols of wood, who pray to gods that cannot save. They're ignoring, church. They're forgetting. They're abandoning. They're rejecting. That's not, that's not us. That should not be us. We need to be decreeing and declaring. Look what it says. Declare what is to be. How many of you know, church, the Bible says that we call those it says, we call those things that aren't as though they were. Amen. So you know what? When we're doing our declaration, you may be in financial need. You may need a healing. You may need a breakthrough. Like Pastor said, the, the gal at, at, at work, everybody's getting raises. It may not appear like you're getting a raise. But you know what? You don't walk that way. You don't talk that way. It says, declare what is to be. 
Present it. Let them take counsel together. Who foretold this long ago? Who declared it from the distant past? And I like this. Was it not I, the Lord? Was it not I, the Lord? He's already decreed it and declared it. He's already set everything in motion. He's already done the work that needs to be done. Genesis says, and God said, God declared, let there be light, and there was light. That same power is on the inside of us. That same power that created the earth, that created the heavens, is just waiting to move on our behalf through our declaration of what we need to come to pass. Not too many excited people in the church tonight because I tell you one thing, when we needed stuff in our house, because we went from, from living in a two-bedroom, one-bath condo, five of us, and I think there was maybe 1,100 square foot of that. But you know what? We went from living in a condo to living now in the house that we have. And before we went from moving to the condo to the house, we would write down, you know, Abaka says write the vision down. We would write the vision down of everything that we wanted. Good neighbors, double pane windows, air conditioning, ceiling fans in every room. And the list goes on. And then after we wrote down what we wanted, what we desired from God, then we would pray, and then we would speak it forth. We would decree it, just like we're doing here in, at the church. We would decree and declare. And I tell you, you can ask my wife, you can ask my kids. I don't think there is one thing on that list that God did not meet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's an awesome God. He is an awesome, awesome God. But church, he wants you. He wants you. You know, I see people sometimes. And they just sit there. A lot of times they just sit there. And they won't do anything. They won't praise, they won't worship, they won't lift their hands. Sometimes they won't even stand. They just sit there. And I know I'm not God, but my heart goes out for those people. Because he's just he's just a God that is so full of love. And what he asks us to do and what he expects of us is so simple. We make it hard. You know, I watch, I've, I've seen, um, I know Pastor Charlie and Pastor Linda pretty good. Just a little bit, yeah. And um, I've watched them and you have no idea and I don't either but I know that they go through things just like we do and yet he preaches he gets up here Wednesday after Wednesday Sunday after Sunday and he preaches regardless of what he may be going through the week and that's a witness that's a man and a woman who truly love God Amen. 
And let me just say this, church. There's a lot of things. There are a lot of things that we should be pulling from them, that we should be, not in a selfish way, okay, maybe, taking from them because it's, 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 it's not, so to say, theirs to give, but God through them to give. And they so willingly do it. And for God, you know, to, to put in pastor's heart this declaration that we do, I mean, we see the fruit of it. We see the fruit of what happens. But just like Pastor Charlie has said, and I'll say the same thing, Malachi talks about robbing God in the tithe and the offering. I, you know what? Once God so, does something, not only on the inside of you, but for you, whatever it may be, once God moves upon your behalf, you know, I, I find it really, really hard, very, very hard not to give, not, not to be obedient and not to pay my tithe and my offering. And, you know, it, it saddens my heart, and I know that if it saddens my heart, then it, it's got to sadden God's heart as far as have to be taking up offerings and, and um, you know, fundraisers and, and, and whatever else. You know, we, we, we have to do to, to raise money. And, um, you know, it's just, it's, just a, it's just a sad thing. And I'll, and I'll just leave it at that. I'll just leave it at that. He loves you, church. I, I can't express that enough. He, he loves you. And he's... Like we sing, he, he's such a good, good father. Man, that, that song just gets me. It, it, it just gets me every time because, you know, if you really stop and think when we're singing that song, if, if you get your mind, I don't know how you can't get your mind off of whatever it is you're going through at any given time when we sing that, but if you get your mind off of what you're going through and just really focus on who God really is, and if you don't know who God really is, and again, you got to get into his word. Because he's, he's such an awesome father. He is such an awesome father. Yeah. And you know, the Bible says, church, one last um, scripture that I want to share. It says in Matthew 6.33, this is one of the first scriptures that God really spoke to me. And really did a working in, in my heart as, as far as uh, not being selfish. Because I, I, was, I was a real selfish person before I came to the Lord. It's like, you can be my friend, Alicia, but you know, what are you, you going to do for me, right? But Matthew 6.33 says this, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Got to put God first. Put him and his word first. And you know what? In, in closing, I, d I just want to say this. I want to say, even our founding forefathers of this wonderful nation of ours knew that with God on their side, nothing was impossible. Because in 1776, they created a document. Who knows what that document was besides Nicole? She's a walking history nut, I tell you. I love her, though. In 1776, they created a document known as what, Nicole? The Declaration of Independence. Listen, church, because they refused to bow down and submit to a man, the King of England, they boldly wrote the Declaration of Independence to separate themselves from the King. Even by signing, they knew they were risking their own lives. My question to you is, what are you willing to risk your declaration for? Amen. Is there anybody here tonight, anybody at all, 
that has never made Jesus the Lord of their lives. Amen. Then with that, I'm going to just pray. Let's pray. Let's bow our heads. Father, we just thank you. We praise you for tonight, Lord. Father, I thank you that your word did not go forth in vain, but that it's going to go out and it's going to accomplish what you want it to do, Father. I just pray for the people here tonight, Lord God. I just ask, Father, that you would continually move upon their behalf, Lord God, that you would continually meet all their needs according to your riches and glory, Lord, that they would continuously be bold, Father, be bold, Lord God, to decree and declare your works, to decree and declare the goodness of their God. Bless every person here tonight, Father, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's, let's let them know how much we appreciate that. Come on, church. Amen. God is good. I want to, I want to do something real quick. He, he really challenged me. But I want to read Isaiah again. What was it, Isaiah 45? Listen to this. Listen to this. God, creator of the heavens, he is, remember, God, maker of the earth. He put it on its foundations, built it from scratch. He didn't go to all that trouble to just leave it empty, nothing in it. He made it to be lived in. This God says, I am God, and I am the one and the only. I don't just talk to myself or mumble under my breath. I never told Jacob, seek me in emptiness and in dark righteousness. I am God. I work out in the open, saying what's right, setting things right. So gather around. Come on in, all you refugees and castoffs. They don't seem to know much, do they? Those who carry around their no God blocks of wood praying for help to a dead stick. So tell me what you think. Look at the evidence. Put your heads together. Make your case. Who told you, and a long time ago, what's going on here? Who made sense uh, uh, of things for you? Wasn't I... The one God, it had to be me because I'm the only God that there is. The only God who does things right and knows how to help. So turn to me and be helped, saved, everyone, whoever and wherever you are. For I am God, the only God that there is, the one and only. I promise in my own name. I promise in my own name, every word out of my mouth does what it says. I never take back what I say. I am God, the only God there is, the one and only. I promise in my own name. It would be a fool not to take God up on his promise. We, we, we believe everybody else. And then we get mad when they let us down. And God has yet to let any one of us down. I love that. I love that. I love what it says there. Man, this is really... This is just, <laughs> never mind. I promise in my own name, every word out of my mouth does what it says. I never take back what I say. 
Everyone is going to end up kneeling before me. Oh, God. Everyone is going to end up kneeling before me. Everyone is going to end up saying of me, yes, salvation and strength are in God. All who have raged against him will be brought before him, disgraced by their unbelief. And all who are connected with Israel will have a robust praising God or praising good life in God. My God, I don't know who that's for. I, I, I love the message translation. I always, I, I, I always look at different translations when I'm hearing people preach or when I'm studying. You walk into my office when I'm studying, I got different translations of Bibles everywhere, and I have them in my iPad for that same reason. And as, as, as pastor was teaching, I, I went to the, the message. I, I'm, I'm always showing people, look what it says in the message. And they just look at me and go, yeah. But I'm telling you, it couldn't, it couldn't say it much more plainer than what pastor already preached to us. God has made some promises. He decrees and declares, and what he speaks, he never takes back. And he says, that what I speak shall accomplish what I've sent it forth to accomplish. You know what that's saying, right? You know the scripture. My word shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I have sent it forth to accomplish. That's exactly what it's saying. And so if we can't believe in the promise of God, then what are we doing trying to serve him? How, how can we try to serve somebody who, who we know doesn't keep their promise? But God has never broken a promise. And, 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 and I'm not a gambling man, but if I was, I'd, I'd bet everything that I had on the fact that God will never break his promise to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor. Let's let Pastor know how much we appreciate that word. Decree and declare. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Decree and declare it. The only thing I'm missing is a big finger like his. One way, Jesus. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Decree and declare. I, I, I was... Um, greeting I was greeting out there today greeting people as they were coming into church and I, I I saw one brother and I said he shook my hand hugged me and I said how you doing brother he says I'm good I mean blessed <laughs> you have to decree it and declare it and it's got to be re a reality in your heart amen remember that that message your your position knowing your position in Christ will help you overcome any condition. Your position in Christ will help you overcome your condition. I've still got that message just moving on, on the inside of me. Amen. So a couple of, uh, of announcements and then we'll be, uh, we'll be uh, dismissed. Can, can, can I get two guys to bring me that envelope stuff out here? Can I get two guys? Yeah. Amen. Here you go. Amen. Amen.